Regular viewers and listeners will know that here at BizVision, we constantly urge you to hone your competitive advantage by embracing technology. But we also tell you to exercise caution. Yesterday's highwaymen have become today's online criminals, and they're very clever and very devious. But just as smart as they are, there are smarter people on your side. And with me today, well, a 300 mile social distance away, is someone who's leading the battle to protect you. He's the CEO of the London based cybersecurity company, Clario Tech Limited. Welcome, Alan Baker. Hi. Hi. Yes, yeah, very nice to meet you as well. And thank you for inviting me to the show. It's lovely to talk. Right. So tell me about yourself. And Clario. Oh, by the way, I did call you Alan because we, we rehearsed this beforehand. It's a Welsh name, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. There's no, from it's just, not a spelling, it's not a spelling stake. Yeah. <laughs> no, tell me I about yourself, Clario. Yeah, I, I was once interviewed on uh, CNBC and uh, the interviewer opened up with Alun, which made me actually oh. sound semi Arabic because <laughs> I didn't know how to pronounce it. So I'm <laughs> glad you've done it right, Mark, and thank you. Okay. So, who are you then, and what is Clario? Uh, who am I? Um, I'm from the Valleys in South Wales, just outside Merthyr Tydfil, um, and I was once uh, recently in the Evening Standard described as a veteran of technology, which makes me feel really <laughs> old, Malcolm. I don't feel old at all. Hey, you okay. haven't got any grey hair. <laughs> yeah, it's coming through, but yeah, I'm fortunate I come from a, a lot of uh, long-lived people with a full head of hair, which is great. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, Clario, um, Clario Tech, as you talked about earlier, um, the brand underneath it is Clario and the product underneath it is Clario. Um, we started the business um, in uh, October 2019, having reversed um, a prior company into this so we took on the revenue stream of a, a company called uh, MacKeeper or product called MacKeeper. But um, Clario really is about building a brand new personalized business to consumers. So it's a consumer led product um, to help people with um, online security, um, fighting cyber crime and their, their personal privacy. Um, and what's really important here, Malcolm, is I like, as a, as a business leader, I always look for disruption. Mm. When I looked at the cyber market, it's mostly 10-year-old companies that started life, if most people were asked about cybersecurity today, they'd talk about antivirus, right? That's the number yeah. one thing they talk about. Yet, as you talked about in your intro, cyber criminals have moved on so much that antivirus today is a small piece of a very large threat matrix that we all face, right? So people are hacking into your home wireless. Yeah. They're um, sitting on the front of an e-commerce site, waiting for your transactions so they can skim your cards. They are hacking into you on hotspots when you're in Starbucks or any other area where you're trying to get online. Um, there's ransomware, which is becoming hugely prevalent in both enterprises and also at, a, at an individual level. So this is evolving and evolving. And things like Internet of Things, which everybody loves to talk about, now means you might have five or six things attached to your network at home, which makes you even more vulnerable because people yeah. can come in via those devices. Mm. So when you look at it, you see cybercrime is rising at about 35% a year. So whatever the traditional vendors are doing clearly isn't working. And what mm. I personally saw was that people don't engage in this. It's, if you think back of all the things governments try to do to change behavior, until they get you to understand the problem, you mostly ignore anything that forces a change in your way of yeah. operating. So today you have car insurance, you have household insurance, you lock your door, your insurance is also determined by whether you have an alarm or not, sometimes locks on windows. We have got used to physically protecting our assets. The biggest threat to your assets today is cyber criminals because that's rising quicker than traditional crime and the mm -hmm. perpetrators are hard to track down. Yet we live our lives going on holiday with our front door open. That's what yeah. we do with cybercrime, right? We don't protect ourselves. We don't protect our passwords. We go onto sites where they're warned in beforehand that you shouldn't go on those sites. And, and it comes down to one simple thing. We are super, super rushed. 
and we trade convenience for risk without understanding risk. Yeah. So I looked at Clario for me, the, the, this was a crusade with you, Malcolm, which was if it's out of control, then whatever is in the market isn't working. How do you change it? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and Clario was me looking at what is a consumer? What does a customer think like? And really, it was just too technical for a start, right? People didn't know what a VPN was. They don't know yeah. what malware is versus viruses and don't want to know, quite frankly. No, no. So everybody we saw was super technical, very complex in the way they sold and full of jargon. Um, mm. So Clario was me thinking about how did Airbnb get you to go and buy a room in a stranger's house, yeah, right? Yeah, it, was, yeah. it, was, right? it was all about this amazing user interface and user experience. How did suddenly Uber make getting taxis cool? It's still a taxi they don't own. Yeah, yeah. It was with an amazing user interface and user experience. And the same with the new banks, right, Malcolm, like Monza and stuff yep. like that. Starling, they they yeah. don't even own, yeah, they don't own the assets behind it. They just give you a different experience. Yeah. So I looked at Clario with a totally different experience, with a mm. brand new tone of voice, a brand new personalization that allows you to understand the risks and allows you to protect yourself against it in a way that you find easy to work with. That yeah. was the whole premise behind Clario. Yeah, I got you there. And, and I understand the importance of being disruptive because um, the, the, the problem I find, though, is I'm, when I'm talking to people about uh, getting properly protected, uh, as we keep doing here and paying for it, is how real is the danger that people face because so many say well it doesn't matter to me it's a bit like covid it doesn't matter to me i can go out. i don't need a mask on you know how real yeah. is the danger yeah and, and that's a really good point some people are risk averse some people are blase about these things yeah um so some of the best stats are in america so i'll just quote some examples of that um roughly every 12 seconds your identity is stolen in north america Right, so can you say that again, please. So your identity is roughly, stolen online every yeah. twelve seconds. Wow, somebody's identity. Yeah. So that's sixty times more likely than your car to be stolen. Right. Okay. Then, if you look at, and um, you have to think about the risk of cyber. It's not just what you do, but most or significant chunk of the risk is corporations that have your data. Mm. So Facebook has had so many data leaks. The recent one um, was EasyJet. Yeah, if you saw yeah. last week in the news. Before mm. that, BA had yeah. their data hacked. Um, we've even had credit agencies having the data hacked yes. and government yes. websites. So on average, in America, again, because the statistics are far more um, sharper, on average, about 1.2 million records are lost a day in America. Wow. Right, so, and usually think about it like this, right, Mark? I'm always fascinated by this because I have to look yeah. into what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a company typically takes 220 days to discover that they've had a breach. 220 days? Yes. So in that time, so one of the, one of the yeah. top uh, hotel groups, they were in there two and a half years before they knew. Oh, so in that time, your data has been grabbed and traded yeah. on the dark web, yeah. okay? So I can buy your data for a few cents. I can buy your email address, Mark and Gallagher, and passwords for a few cents. Right. If I combine that with your bank details, it might cost me $20 because now I've got enough to, actually, if I have your national insurance number, and your, which I can get, and your bank details and your name and address and password now you're worth something a lot more money i might have to pay 20 dollars for that or 20 15 pound for that because now i can create a brand new id i can buy stuff get it delivered to a new address i can move products around i can even open bank accounts potentially in your name right mm. so it just depends on the quality of data people have stolen but typically what happens today is uh you'll get an email of somebody that's lost your data saying dear markham I don't know if you noticed in the news recently, but we've had a data breach. We would suggest, we don't even know, by the way, Mark, how it was yours sometimes, but we would suggest you change your password. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what terrible advice, because their reputation damage kicks in 
for mm-hmm. their reputation with no consideration to yours. Yeah. Right. What they should be saying is, Malcolm, most people use the same email password combination on multiple websites. You should now look at changing anything where you use that email password combination. You should be notifying your bank and you should be telling the bank what's happened and ask them to look out for suspicious transactions. This is what the corporations who lose your data should be saying to you and they're not because they don't care enough about the customer. They care about their own reputation. So by playing down the breach, they feel that their reputation is not damaged so much. But the reality is, in that time when you, they didn't even know that which had happened, somebody's already trading your name. Your, your personal value is in who you are, and somebody's mm-hmm. already damaging it. Now think about it a little bit deeper. Suddenly, somebody has bought something on, in your name, and it's been delivered to a different address and also potentially your bank statement or the transaction statement. You don't know about it. If at some stage in the future you have something like a county court judgment against you or in America, you know, your whole credit score is destroyed, it can, even when you prove it had nothing to do with you, that could take six to nine months or longer to fix. And in the interim, you could lose your house and your car. So this is just a big thing that it's the world's not really fully aware of and it's yeah. getting worse because some of this isn't just individuals it's state sponsored as well so there's a massive massive issue with this and it's a pandemic in its own right that needs to be dealt with okay so let's just keep the focus upon that how is clario solving that particular problem that i've got it, by the way i just keep my i keep my credit credit rating very poor um and the bank account's all empty so it's not worth it <laughs> <laughs> but you know you think about it right if if you look at our society today we live in a, a state of perpetual debt it's what we've kind of grown up with where students are going to leave university with forty five thousand debt yeah. and uh that so you start life with debt. So you're dependent on your credit score for your mortgage, for your car, for all the things you do and credit cards. So, you know, this is not a cash based society anymore. Therefore credit score is critical to your future financial well-being. So that's just a big thing to remember. So the way Clario looks at this, um, you typically from us, Mark, and we we deal with it in, in six areas. We talk about your data. We talk about your bank, your money, we talk about your network, we talk about your devices, um, and we talk about um, your identity and your privacy. So we don't talk about it in the same way as traditional vendors talk about it. You don't hear any technology from us. All, every piece of uh, contact with you on our site, our legal terms are written in simple English. Our cookie policy is in simple English, so you don't get any idea that is complexity but when you sign up in Clario it covers across um, in our launch we'll be on Macs plus um, Apple phones and Android phones and then by the end of the year we'll also be on um, PCs as well for Windows so we cover you wherever whenever or however you connect in a digital world so it's everything from being at home to on the go We protect you in all of those areas and do it in a very simple way. But we also personalize it. So the personalization and the tone of voice. If you think of antivirus, right, Mark, all you get is a spinning wheel going, let me count how many viruses you have, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, then it comes up with a list and you are paying no attention to this whatsoever, right? So Mm. you kind of go, yeah, whatever, get on with it. I believe you sort of, but I'm not even afraid. I don't even think about it. It just gets done because you see it as housekeeping. Yeah, yeah. So with Clario, we've totally personalized it. So what you you get from us is, hey, Malcolm. So you may walk into your house tonight or today. You're already in there. But when we go back to normal times, you may walk into your house and a message will pop up on your phone or on your device when you log on and say, hey, Malcolm, just to let you know, two attempted intrusions on your home wires. Right. Don't worry, it's all sorted. You're good to go. That's the message you get from us. It's super engaging, very personal, right? Mm. Or we may say, hey, Malcolm, two attempted intrusions on your home wireless, we fixed one. 
but the second is more complicated, we need to talk to you. And there's the other big differentiator. When the world is moving to AI, we have use AI in the way we work through um, malware and viruses and stuff, but we also think about when it gets really bad, nobody can promise to protect you 100% of times, right? If, if Facebook are spending hundreds of millions a year trying to protect data and they can't, what chance has anybody got to protect one individual from sometimes human error? Yeah. So what Clario have done is we have 600 technical experts and they've built into the app itself. And that's important. This is not... Uh, an Indian call center or, or offshore call center, this is built into the application. So if a problem occurs that the technology won't fix, a pop down will come and say, Malcolm, we need to speak to you, pick a time. You haven't mm -hmm. had to ring anyone. You'll pick a time 20 minutes later, if we tell you it's urgent, they will ring you and go, Malcolm, let me tell you what the problem is. You don't have to tell them. Yeah. They Because they understand because the software is sent them the information to say this is the problem. And then we will say, Malcolm, let's talk you through how to fix this. Right. Or if you want, we will fix it for you. Just give us access. So that's wow. a couple of things, right? So yeah. tone of voice, very personal, very simple, very easy, covering every device, covering every example of cybercrime that you could get. But when the technology may let you down in some way because it's inevitable, we have a human comes in to actually help you fix the problem. Mm. And that's what's fundamentally different. I think that's fantastic. Um, uh, look, let's just chat about what's happening at the moment in this so-called new normal with WFM or work from home uh, situation. And more, more and more business leaders think, oh, I like this, I can save an office space, you know. Uh, and even yeah. Twitter's saying, Twitter's saying um, you don't have to come to work if you don't want to. Do you think it's a safe strategy that that's be coming there because I worry about the fact that people of the BYODs and all things like that, that they're, they're really exposing themselves. Yeah, so if you think about our, uh, the evolution of tech anyway, we will, as you said, bring our own devices. Wearable tech is now starting to really build momentum. So the points where you are vulnerable have just exploded and an internet of things will massively explode that. Just want to clarify a point on that, Mark, when people go, well, I'm never going to have an intelligent fridge. But what people forget is a lot of devices today literally are just simply sending out something that says, I'm broken, you need to fix me. Yeah. And that, that means there's a chip on your network. If there's a chip on your network, I can get into your network via the chip because the chip itself may not have the protection layers that software has in the same mm. way. That's why you're vulnerable, not because you may decide as an individual to embrace less smart devices, but you know your TV is a smart device because if you're using Sky, you're connected to the internet. Right? Yeah. So that's an access point into your home. Once I'm in your home, I can take over your video cameras. I can take over your um, camera in your nursery. I can listen through Alexa. I can do anything once I'm on your network. That's why... The, the risk is broadening so quickly. So coming on to your point about working from home, I think it's there's, um, again, a little bit of apathy and a little bit of ignorance that needs to be addressed. And a big thing about Clario is we're trying to educate people and also yes. trying to get governments to step up. Yeah. Because if you work from home, usually somebody will ask you to dial into your network via the VPN, right? So that's protecting the firewall of the data that you're going into. Okay. But, but a network, and this is why banks and everybody else have a problem, right? They think hiding behind a firewall makes them safe. You're the Achilles heel, because if I break down you, I don't need to break down through your corporate firewall. I am now you getting into that network, not... Uh actually stopping some external person going in via an external route. Mm. So what we're saying to people is use VPN. We don't talk about a VPN. We say protect your identity. So we disguise who you are, where, which what your device is labeled as its internet protocol, its IP address. We, we hide that from people so that even if they get to you, they can't work out who you are, where you are. So they can't gather the data points about you to make you more vulnerable. So mm. that's the key thing. 
if you work from home, you have to be, one of the other things we look at is all inbound email we scan. So I don't know if you've had them, I have personally. I get something from HMRC today and it actually looks like it's from oh. HMRC. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. yeah. Even the extension on there, Malcolm, in the past you'd get yeah. Joe would Google and know it was an HMRC. Yeah. Now it might go HMRC, uh, no reply, but done in a different order and they can get you in a way that you never expected before. Yeah. So we are also making sure we're scanning all of those inbound emails and blocking them. We're also looking at all of your, on, when you go to buy online, we are scanning that site to make sure there's no um, skim in front of the site you're buying from. So it's all aspects of your points of connectivity. Um, the other thing that's happening, which is very different, I don't know if you recall very early with the internet, if the bank said, we have some suspicious transactions, they'd send you a list, you'd go through it and go, these are not mine, they refund you the next day. Yeah. My daughter had an Uber account hacked, okay? First of all, you can't ring Uber. The bank said, ring Uber. That was the bank's response, by the way, a high street bank. You can't ring Uber. Eventually, when my daughter got through to them, they canceled it. But it took nearly nine months for the bank to refund the money. Because, wow. because the bank, how can the banks keep paying mm -hmm. something that's growing as a risk to them when they have no means of controlling it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So their responsibility has to move to the consumer as well. We have to look at cyber in the same way as we do protecting our house. And to get insurance, you have to make sure you've got the right type of lock or certain valuables over a certain amount and put in somewhere or have extra insurance. We have to start to say to people, look, general good housekeeping means I have to have my own cyber security and I have to prove I've got it. And I can't mm. see a future where that isn't happening because yeah. insurance companies can't keep paying out if you don't protect yeah. yourself. Yeah, I, I, can, I can totally understand that one. Um, this working from home aspect, um, whereas more and more people are having to start their own businesses, you know, whether it's a one man or a very, very small yes. micro the, the thing, uh, I, I know you focus upon, uh, upon uh, domestic or you know, private then but can Clario does Clario work for the small business or the work yeah, so, person? so we, it, we've been approached a lot actually and, and it will be um, but we're not focusing on it so um, you know the, the if you think the traditional cyber market has been device centric right if I protect your laptop you're protected well that's yeah. nonsense now. most people buy do most of their online buying on a phone so your phone is super vulnerable and we protect your phone as well. And I think that's a big important thing. We're all on iPads or, or, or tablets or phones doing transactions. So you've got to protect every um, asset you have in your digital life, right? Um, but if you're working from home, you've got to have things like a VPN and we can, we provide that. We're also doing something which is super important. We're scanning the dark web for you. So right. if you give me your email and your password, we will tell you whether anybody has traded that combination, um, on the dark web and when, and 70% of the time, we can even tell you where the data got taken from whether it was a Facebook breach or an EasyJet breach, we can often say this is the email password combination that came from the EasyJet breach. So being preventative like that means you then are alerted to stuff to make changes of your behavior or change your password email combinations ahead of something hitting you in a bank. Because they're getting smarter too. It's a mm. bit like... If you lose your credit card, somebody might wait a little while before they start using it if you don't cancel it. But equally, a lot of cyber criminals sit on your data for a little while and then start to go to work on it because they've yeah. got enough to do some real damage to you. So, yeah, working from home is a couple of things. You, you really do need to have be even more aware that you're connecting safely because you're bringing a threat to your business like never before. Um, you need to be far more alert to inbound stuff. We are seeing a 34% increase in, on our, in our support center for malware around COVID and things like that. At the moment. Right. People are scared. They're worried about 
yeah. payments from the government and they are desperate to see good information or good news. So people are getting into a lot of trouble just by scammers that have come out of COVID alone. Mm. So it's just be even more diligent about this. It's super important when you're working from home. Yeah, I think I'm with you, by the way, because you know I always have had um, paid for protection, protection yeah. there. But I frustratingly find so many businesses or small or people I deal with, or it's individuals and that, who think that having something free like a, an Avast or other is going to cover them. It ain't, is it? No. So look, nothing in life is free. And no. that, yeah. if you start with that as a simple point of, of um, focus for you, you have to ask yourself, if I'm getting something free, what, how do they make their money? And one of our major competitors recently was called out on the fact that they were selling your data, right? So yeah. this, is, this is a big thing, right, Malcolm? How we are in an industry that people don't trust. And the job of this industry is to protect you. And therefore, you must trust us to protect you. Mm. So this is where I saw this wonderful opportunity as well. Claro, it's not particularly well trusted. And um, literally, last month, one of the major players in it was selling data. You know, that's categorically not what Claro would ever do. But nothing is free. Right? Um, you know, my daughter uses a free internet. I've traditionally used a free one. And she said, first of all, I keep getting pop-up adverts. Um, mm. And I keep getting my data tracked. Now, one thing we all have to remember, and this needs to start at school, we leave an indelible footprint in the internet over time. And if yeah. young people don't understand that, in future, the job prospects and all sorts of things can be affected by this. So your data is traded. You have very little privacy, but you are passing those rights away without giving it a second thought because nobody explains it to you. So it's almost like, well, it should start in a very different place. It should start in, I have to give you approval, not you take it because you've disguised it in a cookie policy that I'm never going to read. So there's a fundamental change needed in the way we deal online and how we protect people online and their privacy. I think that's absolutely critical to people. But free means you're paying somewhere else. And that generally means somebody's using your data. Yeah, I, I know there's a big um, education um, effort needed there. Uh, but when I was involved with the contracts for London 2012, I was also working with um, uh, the special branch and others down in, in, in London there. And we were doing some presentations. And one presentation, the, the head guy stood up and said that, um, I don't think you know this, but uh, there are people trawling your Facebook and your children's Facebook, and they're getting the names of the animals, your favorite pets, and things like that, and then storing them away until you become of age to have your own bank account. Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, most people, believe it or not, staggering, and I mean staggering amounts of people, use one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Right. Then the next choice is your parents, your mother's maiden name, pet names, or your children's names in a combination of numbers. It's a known fact and we keep doing it, right? So it's not that difficult for people to access your digital world. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also, by the way, you can actually buy kits to do yeah. this online. They sell a DIY cyber criminal kit. It sounds bizarre, but that's the world we live in today, Mark. It's scary. So, yeah. and, and the hard thing as well, Mark, I mean, please, you know, I, I've attended an event recently where you have Europol there, the FBI there, and people like that, because um, this is not a normal police thing, right? Mm. A criminal investigation means I know that the guy who robbed your house lives in the same town or the town next to you. This cyber criminal could be from any country in the world. Yeah. And the local police won't even half the time record it because it's an impossible stat for them to ever achieve in terms of solving the crime. So, you know, it, it's, it, it needs a totally different approach to this. It needs global collaboration on this, but it also people need to understand they're more vulnerable because it's a harder thing for traditional policing to fix as well. Mm. I, I get 
the really strong feeling that you are totally focused upon giving customers reassurance and about their security. Um, and you're implementing yourselves at Clario of some of that security. So tell me about App Esteem qualification and how we set you apart from others. Yeah, so um, as I said before, we um, bought on board a, a product called MacKeeper. MacKeeper had a, a, a bad reputation in the market because, and if you think back, and it even exists still today, you buy an antivirus product and it keeps popping up going, you better renew, you're not going to be safe. You better renew, you're not going to be safe. And, and so the, the selling approach of most people in the space traditionally been through fear, right? And it, it's an emotional sales response that you're scared that something that's going to happen, you're going to buy. It's never really been about value. And what Clara has been trying to do is bring a different approach to the market. So when we took MacKeeper, um, we had to clean up the, the product reputation. We didn't want to change the MacKeeper product name. We wanted to make sure people understood that we saw the history of that product, but we believed we could make it both a far more valuable product with much better features and functions, but also get rid of anything in that product that, that caused people concern in terms of hmm. tough selling or anything. So what I looked at at the time was coming back to that risk thing um, and trust. Yeah. I went, well, it's surely cybersecurity is regulated. Well, at a business level, it is. At a consumer level, it's not. And Apesteem was one of the bodies that I found out there that it was the only one that I saw had um, a consumer first approach. And we believe in being the consumers at the center of everything we do. All of our business KPIs, all of our metrics driving the business around making a customer happy and delighted. So Apesteem is a consumer champion and we see ourselves as a consumer champion. So what, Ap what we used Apesteem for was let's regulate MacKeeper. So they look at, do you use the right messaging? Is it appropriate level of um, alerting for the, the risk of the threat? Are you using the right colors? Are you using the right channels? So we wanted a third party to audit what we did to make sure that we ticked all the right boxes mm -hmm. because we saw that as the only way that we could see to prove to the market that MacKeeper was now the only cyber suite in the market that had got been through this rigorous process um, and also on top of that we were notarized by apple as well because apple at the end of last year um, introduced a new mechanism that said if you're not notarized by us you won't be able to be downloaded through safari right. so that was another process where there was a gateway for you know unusual applications or unwanted applications for getting into the app environment yeah. So for us, App Esteem and the clean apps um, uh, movement is really welcome because it provides some regulation into a much needed marketplace that needs regulating. Fascinating. I mean, I'm really clear um, about, in my mind, about the benefits of Clario, but what I really like is the clarity you're giving to it and the way that you're, you're explaining it um, quite correctly. So what do you mean then when you say we are Clario? Yeah, so, you know, we are, we are 850 people in Wow. Okay. And um, all of them working remotely. And by the way, just on that, our productivity went up, which is amazing. We're going to talk about that later. But um, the, um, the key here for us is that this needs participation. We mm. can't help you if you don't want to help yourself. Now, you're not going to do that unless we educate you a little bit differently. Yeah. So we are talking to all sorts of large corporations today about their responsibility. We're also trying to educate consumers, and we will also start to put pressure on governments as well to say, look, you may have a website, but who knows about it, right? Mm. Who, know, who reads it? Right? So just because you've ticked the box doesn't mean you've solved the problem. This pandemic is getting worse. We need to collectively work on it to make it better. But our we is everybody, but it starts with the consumer. We want to work with our customer to make them safe. And that means they have to participate. And it starts with when you set, when you set Clario up, we ask you questions about your lifestyle, how you work, so we can automatically protect you in certain ways by taking responsibility for that for you. If you can override it if you want. 
So yeah. the whole idea behind it is, look, we need to work together. If you don't want to work on this, we can't help you because you downloading antivirus or VPN from some third party doesn't protect you. It has to be 360 degrees, seven days a week, 24 hours, because even when you're sleeping, people can access your home devices. So protection's everywhere, and we have to work with you to deliver that. Mm. So we, we are Clario. We go together. I, I, I just love it. I love the message, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's just move slightly away from Clario for, for our last few questions there onto something that when I was reading up about you, I really got the feeling about your tremendous experience in, in leadership and, and, and management. So can you give some general guidance, maybe say three top tips of those many thousands of viewers and listeners um, and how to become the effective leader of tomorrow? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question, Mark. Um, my, my top tip, I guess, is believe in yourself. I, you know, social mobility is actually yeah. just started to level off or going to decline. And I, and I think, you know, I'm my own worst critic. I think I could have progressed quicker if I hadn't carried what may now appear to chip on my shoulder that says I'm from a mining family in South Wales from Earth that did build. Um, so it took me a while to believe in myself. And I look at young people today, they have got a better education than we ever had. They have worked harder at that education. Yeah. They're smarter, they're brighter, and they're digital natives. So anything is possible. Number one is believe in yourself. Nobody yeah. is better than you. And it's all about how much you apply yourself to be successful. That's Excellent. the big tip I would give people. Yeah. But I think as you climb a ladder, it's a realization that um, an old style of management is gone. It's, this is not dictatorships anymore. To get the best out of teams, you have to share, you have to collaborate, and therefore you have to treat people as grown-ups. So my, my next thing is everyone's an individual. We're all motivated in different ways. Mm. Our, our life-work balance has changed. And we used to talk about work-life, Particularly now with COVID, it's life work because we yeah. do what worked our life. Yeah. And if you try to rigidly manage the, the, the people of tomorrow, young people of tomorrow by saying it's a nine to five model or whatever it is, that's just never going to work. So yeah. rec recognize it's about output, not about the hours you take in clocking in and clocking out. It's about contribution. So think mm -hmm. of everybody individually and treat them as individuals. I think that's super, super important. Um, and also recognize one other thing. I see this a lot, right, Mark, and you see great entrepreneurs that have a super successful exit and then fail next time or they sit on board somewhere. And I, you know, I've sat on quite a few boards. There is one thing that people need to realize. There's always a third dimension here. You can be in the right place with the right product, but it has to be at the right time. And something that could succeed tomorrow or could have succeeded yesterday didn't succeed today just because of time. Yeah. And that's one of the harder things to get right. And that also brings in an element of luck into everyone's success. So mm. just keep going because it might be better tomorrow. It might work tomorrow. Yeah. Just understand that audience, understand time and timing is critical things. And always look back on a lesson It's not that didn't work. It just didn't work today. Could it have worked tomorrow if these things have changed? So mm -hmm. be very flexible and agile in the way you think. Yeah. Learn quickly and adjust. Yeah. I think um, that's similar to, you know, in selling, it's never no forever, it's just no today. Because the time's not right, isn't it? Yeah. Let's look at the yeah, other side. Yeah. yeah. Let's look at the other side. I'm sure that you've won a lot of T-shirts and shredded them, as we all have all through our life. You know. What three things should the forward-thinking business leader be aiming to avoid? Uh, I thought, do you know what? Don't believe your own hype is the first yeah. thing, yeah. okay? Yeah. Gotcha. If you, if you look at any business, I think they're at their most vulnerable when they think they've made it to the peak, right, of the mountain. It just means there's another mountain to climb. And if you look at the pace on which that traditional bell curve has collapsed, mm. 
Mm. Companies used to be like IBM and, and DEC and all those old HP companies and everything else. They dominated marketplaces for a period and they had to evolve and most of them had to take a big dip before they re-emerged. So there's a huge lesson for us. That whole process now is accelerated into years, not decades. So yeah. you have to just keep innovating, keep moving, because the minute you think you've made it is at the point when you're most vulnerable to somebody coming in and taking it away from you. Mm. And that's the biggest lesson, I think, for any future leader. And also, just don't use platitudes, Mark. And when people yeah. say people are our most important asset, Prove it, right? Yes. Show us that you have got a mechanism that engages your employees. You know, we use, for our customers, we use um, Trustpilot, NPS, and we're doing a blended thing around customers for customer engagement to prove that we are a customer-centric business. But we also believe that we treat our employees fantastically and therefore we have ENPS which is employee net promoter score so you have to look at that and go right live it don't just say it because it looks good on a presentation deck to investors or you know to whoever you've got to live and be authentic and people use that all the time but don't tell me that's important if you're not measuring it right don't measure it if you're not looking to improve it just because it looks good. So yeah. they are my big pieces of advice to people. I think it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And, and just and before I get to my final question, just to remind people, uh, I think my finger's pointing the right way to your, uh, yes. your URL yes. there. Clario.com. Yes co not dot co yes. dot uk it's dot co yes. so um li listen my final question to you then if you were granted three wishes i haven't got my fairy lights on today if yeah. you're granted three wishes to ensure the flourishing of the future digital workplace what would they be hmm. so let's start at the very top um for me being digital natives now, which, which the Gen Y, Gen X people are beyond doubt, and, and even us more mature, more uh, experienced people in the market have learned to become dependent on digital. It also opens up the gap between the haves and have-nots a lot more. And I think in the Western world that exists, but if you look at the emerging countries and um, uh, the third world countries, it, it widens that gap even further. And I think globally, if we are going to succeed, we've just got to make sure that we all understand everybody needs to be connected because it totally disenfranchises people if they're not. So, mm. my, you know, that would be a big wish for me, Malcolm, is that, you know, the, we look at providing food and we look at short-term fixes in many cases, but so much of the future for um, third world countries, emerging countries, is a need for an infrastructure and also a mechanism that allows people, regardless of their backgrounds, to have devices that can connect them. Because that right. opens up so much possibility, right? You can now start to create a business really easily because you've got an online presence. You, and you can also move goods from one area to another just by buying and selling well. You don't need to have built it. You don't need great supply chains to manage it as well. So it opens up so much opportunity for startups. And in emerging economies, that's so key as well. So to me, a future where everyone is connected and we work hard to ensure that and provide that infrastructure and that level of, of um, support for those countries is critical and, and should be a priority for people. Um, I also think that um, digital awareness needs to start in the classroom. We're not doing a good job of that. So we've got to, you know, we've, we've talked about the lost generation before now. Let's not lose any more generations because we allowed them to naively do stuff that they may regret for the rest of their lives. So education for a digital healthy digital life has to start in the classroom and bearing in mind kids start connecting to the internet now from four or five years of age yes. it's almost it's almost <laughs> like the language you teach them with it's younger than that by the way Alan. yeah <laughs> my, exactly. I got my grandchild is 18 months and he keeps changing the yeah. yeah so so you know we need to think about 
yeah. modernized in the classroom and the yeah. syllabus to reflect this as a way of life now. We're ignoring it and that's super dangerous. So I think mm. that's a second factor for me. Um, then I, I guess the third one is, is also um, really also, and COVID's drawn attention to this market. I haven't really thought it through completely yet, but we've gone from globalization and now mm -hmm. we've become isolated, right? Yeah. And you even see it with different countries being far more isolationists um, as COVID sort of disrupted their economies and stuff. So there is a temptation for, I can now buy products anywhere in the world, they can get delivered to me. But the carbon footprint around that is staggering, right? right. And it doesn't always make sense. Yeah. So I think we've got to think about responsible supply chains going forward and think about the cost and consequence of moving goods around the world just because I can source them cheaper somewhere and look at the impact it can have on the economy. I think what we saw with COVID is that nature is fighting back and we now need to plan differently about pandemics going forward. We had that same problem going forward with global warming and the impact we see with, with all of the things in nature today around large storms and things like pandemics now being certainly on everybody's radar. So I just think we need to think about a responsible internet from in terms of protecting your data, protecting your privacy, changing the way that companies disabuse and deliberately misdirect you about the way they're handling your data and tracking you. That has to change. But then we also have to think about what does global supply chains look like when we start to think about a responsible earth as well. Mm. So. Alan Baker de Claria, I have thoroughly enjoyed listening to you and I've learned so much too. You're going to be a tremendous success with Clario. I'm just wondering what the next challenge of that is. Alan, thank you very much indeed for your time today. Appreciate it.